Hello, my name is Mike Dowdy and I'm the Executive Director for Statewide Projects at the Capital Region BOCES and I want to thank you for taking time to view this presentation. This is the presentation that we have been using at our statewide data convenings to gather information from the field on a statewide data system. So why are we here? I'm sure you've heard a lot about data and data systems as they relate to schools. And hopefully you're here because you're feeling a sense of urgency. Because when it comes to data and information gathering in our schools, we have so many challenges and opportunities. And that's what we're here to talk about and hopefully gather your feedback. We've always had challenges in our schools, societal issues, politics, things that make us take a hard look at what we're doing and how we're doing it so we can best support our kids and families. In 1969, long before the internet and our modern day immediate access to information, people said the problem they were most worried about in our schools was lack of discipline. Then it was drugs. Then it was violence. And today it's financial support. Actually, today it's all those things and more, right? Our schools are the center of our society in many ways, which is why it's so important that we never stop trying to find better ways to do what we do. Our students don't have time for us to get bogged down by problems and challenges. They only have time for us to act efficiently and to the best of our abilities. They only have time for us to be constantly evaluating what we do, whatever our role in our school system, and to remain future focused. And the best way for us to do this is to rely on information, information that our students, our educators, our schools, our communities need to help our students succeed. We need to make sure that we know what the issues are, that we know what we're trying to solve, and that only then can we be confident that we are implementing the best solutions in our schools. Think about it. If you go to the doctor with a stomach ache, he or she is going to have to run some tests, gather information, before they tell you if it's just indigestion or if it's cancer, or if it's something in between. If they just go ahead and act on instinct, they can spend a whole lot of time and money and never actually fix the problem. Our children don't have time for that kind of approach in our schools. Our kids need us to know before we act. They need us to act efficiently and effectively because their education depends on it. So we're here today to talk about the best ways for us to do this in the educational sphere. How are we going to get better at gathering all of the information we need about our students, our staff, and our educational system to actually address some of these problems in a meaningful way? We asked some educators some of these questions, and here's what they said. Think about a physician when a, a doctor is sort of giving you a checkup, right? Every area that's, that's checked is, is a data point. Um, and the same thing with education. We use it in, in every way we possibly can to better inform us about our kids. We have um, different types of assessments that we do. We have universal screening, then we have our formative assessments, and then we of course have the summative assessment of the New York State. We talk about the essential standards and what we expect students to know, and then we determine which students um, need enrichment because they've mastered the standards, which students need intervention, and which students would benefit from additional practice. We take a look at data, again, on you know, these, these um, you know, kind of concentric circles of, of cycles, right? There's stuff that we look at daily, there's stuff that we look at, you know, weekly, monthly, annually, um, you know, when, in what way are students, you know, making appropriate progress. Data can be, you know, a, a game changer in terms of thinking about the equity equation, right? So one of the things that we started doing, you know, years ago, you know, is we started breaking out, you know, our suspension data and saying, here's how many black kids got suspended, here's how many white kids got suspended, here's how many kids with disabilities got suspended, and we now publish every quarter what the relative risk ratio is. You know, here, here's what our suspension data looks like, and our black kids have a relative risk ratio of this, our white kids have a relative risk ratio of this. Here's how many kids are reading on grade level or aren't reading on grade level and what the relative risk ratio is. We've been looking at um, course failures, you know, within our um, senior high and the middle school and looking at um, students by demographics and, you know, is there a disproportionality in there? My son does go here and he's part of the collective responsibility model. And because of the way we are so um, focused and we have such targeted instruction based on essential standards, if a student um, is struggling with one standard Standard, that is temporary. It's only until the next assessment. In the past, we would do a really good job of figuring out what the students that struggled need. Mm -hmm. Now we're also figuring out what students that just need more practice 
a little bit of support or students that they have the skill, how can we extend their thinking? Every time we see children grow in the classroom, that is successful use of data. Because even if it's just anecdotal information that I'm gaining from what I know about my kids, um, and then providing a, a differentiated approach to instruction to move you forward, that's, I think, the difference between sort of, you know, feeling around in the dark for the light switch, right? And using a flashlight to walk across the dark room. One of the, you know, the, the real difficulties with, um, you know, getting into data is that the more you know, the more you realize you don't know, right? And you start to have more and more questions and you want to interrogate the, the data in different ways and you want to in interrogate it um, in ways that are, are far deeper than, than perhaps people anticipated when they first set up those systems. Looking at that data and saying, yeah, I, I didn't, maybe that's not, I, I don't teach that the best way. I, I noticed that you did an amazing job and you got your students to this level. I wasn't able to do that. What did you do? And I'm just speaking in the academic realm. We have five different systems that we have to access to really yeah. understand mm -hmm. you know, what students' data shows. Things like dirty data sets, right? Information that's not accurate. Um, students' uh, transient, transiency. When children come to us from a different school district, we don't really know. Students moving in and out is a challenge that sometimes I think like, does that challenge need to be there and does that barrier need to be there? You know, we still do it that old paper way where we wait for that fax of that transfer request to come and then we gather all our files and then we fax it over and we do it one kid at a time even though we know all three kids in the family have moved. You know, parents fill out the paperwork and they check off a box that whether they have an IEP or not, and then um, then we ask for that second set of documents. And sometimes if they don't check off the box, we never know that they have one until two weeks after they've already been in the class. There's just never enough time. We could meet for hours if we needed to. We have 40 minutes once a week to discuss student assessments. Yeah, so much time in the past has been spent on actually analyzing the assessment versus where do we go next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like we spend a lot of time on the here's what, but now the so what and now what are the pieces that we run out of time. And that's mm -hmm. the most crucial piece. Similarly, high stakes standardized assessments, New York State assessments, information that comes out in August, it's not helping anybody. Right? It's given us a sense of where children were performing at a particular day and time. But in terms of in real time, being able to alter instruction and assist and make changes to help a child grow, it's not. Also, it's three months late. So now not only was that child having difficulty in that particular um, standard area during the academic year, but there's also been three months of down or two and a half months of downtime now. There is a lot more to life than English, language, arts, and mathematics. They're very important, there's no doubt about it. But there is a whole host of information related to social studies and science and technology, arts and athletics and, you know, community service and civics and all of these, right, sort of constitute what, what's an important public education. Um, you know, teachers work magic in classrooms every day and really, really great teachers are really, really great magicians because they're able to give so many disparate people what they need and move them all forward simultaneously. So if we were able to put together a platform that would provide them with information in real time that would be holistically useful, um, more than just English language arts and mathematics, I think we would really be moving ahead. But it would be wonderful to be able to have all those other pieces Absolutely. of data at our <laughs> fingertips to tell the whole story and the true picture of a child versus just a summative assessment that New York mm -hmm. State puts out that is very academically based. Um, you really do need to have the full picture of data before you can make decisions about students. You know, the really big piece as we in schools, you know, come to grips with the notion that, you know, we are just one of many institutions that sit within a community and the better we are able to share and integrate information and data with other agencies, the better off the community as a whole is going to be at serving the population. And so how is it that we can integrate our data with you know, county health systems, with pediatricians, um, you know, with other service providers and other clinicians in the community in a way that is not violating you know, confidentiality of children, of patients, and, and all of those kinds of things.
talking about data, what are we talking about? We're talking about information, and we all need information to do our jobs well, but it has to be the right information. Otherwise, we can spend a whole lot of time doing a lot of work that keeps us busy, but helps no one. We could spend a lot of time thinking we're treating cancer when we're dealing with indigestion, and we have to do all of this while worrying about privacy and security. Information gathering and use in our schools is a big deal. Don't we want to do it right? ESSA provides us with an opportunity because there are new expectations for how we measure progress and set indicators. There are new expectations for what improvement will look like. There is an expectation to work smarter. There is an expectation that we all go from thinking we are doing the right things for our kids to knowing we are doing the right things for our kids. And it is the knowing that is so important. It is the knowing that our kids and their future require of us. Whether you are a parent, a teacher, an administrator, an after-school program provider, or an education advocate, you spend a lot of time working on our schools. And you do that work based on information you have collected or information someone else has provided to you. You are concerned about security. You are concerned about too much information or irrelevant information being collected by our schools. This is why today we want you to think about what this whole process should look like. All of the BOCES in New York have banded together and all 37 BOCES district superintendents are leading the charge to find ways to improve the ways we use information in our schools so we as educators can improve our instructional practices. In order to do this though, we have to start at the beginning. We have to better understand the challenges we face in gathering and using information. And that's where you come in. Think of this as data gathering for our educational leaders who are looking for ways to solve the problems that surround information collection and data systems in our schools. We're holding meetings around the state at which educators and other important stakeholders are gathering to weigh in on this topic. We need to hear from you a little bit about your experiences, your frustrations, but also what you see as possible solutions. That's what this is about, to talk about problems and possible solutions. But before we do that, let's take a minute to think about exactly what we're talking about here. When we talk about a data system, we are actually talking about multiple systems, systems that may or may not talk to each other, systems that were built and exist for very different reasons. Right now, we collect a lot of information for compliance purposes because the government told us we had to in order to be accountable. This is information that is collected and sent in a very manual way, I might add, to the state and sometimes federal level. Is this all of the data that we have in our schools? No and it is typically shared in the aggregate, meaning information is shared about whole schools or districts versus individual students. But we have a lot of other information that we need in order for our schools to operate effectively. Food service and transportation data, athletics information, and there are our systems that don't necessarily deal with student information, but certainly staff, substitute data, business operations, board operations. This chart shows the number of data systems and services currently offered by our regional information centers, I'll talk about the RICs shortly. Not only are there 34 different categories of systems, but within each category, there are multiple different types of services that districts can choose from. For example, across New York State, school districts are using at least seven different student management systems, as many as 14 different data analysis services. And these are just the systems we know about. At the local level, many of you know, schools are using all different kinds of information gathering systems. Some are technical, but others are manual and paper-based. We're all over the place. There is virtually no consistency, and when that is the case, you end up with a process that is time-consuming and labor-intensive. You end up with a lot of room for error and a web of systems that, frankly, isn't that helpful when you consider how time-consuming it is or when you consider the fact that students change schools or districts sometimes. What we have now is something that is pieced together and, again, is, in many cases, built for compliance purposes. We are unable to predict much of anything, but even worse, the information we have tends to be post-mortem. Very often, you aren't getting your hands on the most important information, what you really need to make decisions, until long after it would have been helpful. And then there's this. In this day and age of ransomware and hackers, as well as concerns surrounding the misuse of information about our students, data privacy, security, and responsible data use are more important than ever. Any system we use to collect or store student data needs to be carefully scrutinized and a series of safeguards must be in place to protect our kids as well as our staff. Any district that works with a regional information center knows this well because the RICs do just that. 
working with not only vendors, but also the state education department to make sure any agreement with a company for data collection and storage meets state and federal privacy laws. Any collection of student or staff data needs to be purposeful and carefully considered. Otherwise, everyone involved is at risk. Which is why this system, or web of systems, we currently have in place needs to be carefully reviewed and reconsidered, and quickly. So, just a quick time out for a second. Uh, do you know what a BOCES is? What about a regional information center? Because that's going to be key here. In 1948, the New York State Legislature created Boards of Cooperative Ed Educational Services, or BOCES, to provide shared educational programs and services to school districts within the state. Today, there are 37 BOCES that are partnering with nearly all of the state school districts to help meet students' evolving educational needs through cost-effective and relevant programs. Note that the big five city school districts, New York City, Buffalo, Rochester, Yonkers, and Syracuse, do not currently belong to a BOCES. The idea is that the BOCES network is capable of offering cost-effective services to schools across the state. Within those 37 BOCES, there are 12 Regional Information Centers, or RICs, meaning that each RIC serves several BOCES and their component school districts within their region. RICs offer a variety of administrative and classroom services and tools in the areas of data analysis, technology integration, and support. The BOCES RIC system is the group conducting this work working with the local school districts to identify problems, roadblocks, opportunities, and solutions that surround our educational data system here in New York. I'd be remiss if I told you that no thought had already gone into this work prior to you viewing this presentation today. Visioning work on this topic actually started last summer when the district superintendents from the 37 BOCES got together and thought about information they believe would be helpful to have in our schools. We've also talked to educators from around the state to hear a little bit about what they are currently doing, and now we will have your input. So what's next? What happens after this presentation? The BOCES district superintendents will review your feedback. They will work together with the directors of the regional information centers to think about what steps are reasonable given what you and those attending the other meetings, just like this, have said. If you already have everything you need in the way that you need it, great. It means that our RICs have done a great job. If there are other things that would be helpful to you, we want to hear that too. On this slide, you can see the areas that we focused on during our facilitated group discussions during the in-person meetings. And this information was gathered and will be shared with the district superintendents. You have an opportunity to join this conversation uh, using a platform called Thought Exchange. If you follow the directions on this slide, you can join in that conversation and add to the information that is being collected and will be reviewed by the BOCES district superintendents and the directors of the regional information centers. Thank you for taking time to listen to this presentation and it's important for you to know how much we appreciate the involvement of the entire field in supporting this work moving forward.